First of all, from the baseline in Madras, he covered the width of the peninsula with a series of triangles and then set his focus on the meridional line moving northward towards Hyderabad. Lambton's surveys were now moving out of known territories as the Nizam's territory was not British. He could not be sure of support from the Nizam. Recognition came to him late in life when he was elected as a corresponding member of the Academy of Sciences in Paris and in 1817 when he was elected Fellow of the Royal Society in London. But the jungle would eventually take its toll. He was obviously affected by the hardships of the life he had led for over two decades. And he died in 1823 in Hingangat near Nagpur. But destiny was to ensure that there was continuity in Lambton's work. Five years before he died, on December 26, 1818, Lieutenant George Everest joined him as assistant. George Everest, now known as Everest, took over from Lambton, and for him the completion of the meridional arc was to become an obsession. In his attempt to get to the plains to extend the triangulation, he ran into a major problem. There were no high structures from which to send signals and make the observations. Thus, there seemed to be no alternative but to make high observation towers from which to receive and send the signals. I established in my camp a regular manufactory of blue lights, which I soon taught my own establishment to make of the very first size and quality, for very little more than eight annas each. It was hard work, very hard work, and such as I should not be able to stand frequent repetition of. But the result is that the agreement of the several parts of the work though it does not show an accuracy sufficient for a final series of triangles, is yet, in my opinion, such as to give geographical data of much greater value than any the Honourable Court of Directors are in possession of. It was eccentrics like them who were more concerned with precision and accuracy. But they were the exceptions rather than the rule. From the time he took over from Lambton, Everest was determined to take the Ark up to Agra, if not beyond. If you do not take some pains, you will never succeed, and I may be detained here for the next six years. It is hardly possible to imagine any part of the earth more dreary or desolate, or more fatal to human existence. Yet, over this deadly tract, I had to throw an extensive net of triangles, and though I succeeded most satisfactorily, yet I suffered very seriously from two successive attacks of the fever peculiar to that climate, and in my constitution, received a shock from which it has never effectually recovered.
I made a severe example of three of the principal offenders by publicly flogging them and turning them out of camp with ignominy. But the natives of India are not a malice-bearing race, and finding when they knew me better that good behavior was a perfect security against all unkindness, they became at last willing, obedient, and obliging as I could desire. Finally, the Sironj baseline was completed in spite of many unmitigated interpersonal tensions, disasters and illnesses. Calcutta was not central to the GTS project but was important insofar as it was the seat of power and convincing the East India Company masters was easier from Calcutta than from Sironj. He planned to link Calcutta to the Great Ark as part of its eastern trunk. But before he did that, he set up base, perhaps for the first time in his life in India, in Masuri. He bought a place on a nice open ridge at a place called Hathi Pao and built himself a house to live in. This was going to be his residence from now on and the Doon Valley below was to become the home of the Survey of India. From Hathipao he got a panoramic view of the mighty Himalayas. This mattered a lot to him because he had decided that in addition to extending the arc to the Doon Valley, he would also measure the giant Himalayas, which he was convinced were the mightiest mountains in the world, but about which there was little information. Among the people helping him in this task was an Indian from Bengal, Radhanath Shikdar, who was one of Everest's human computers. Some people also believe that it was Shikdar who finally worked out the calculations of the height of Mount Everest. But before he got there, he had to complete the great arc which had been deserted at Sironj over seven years ago. In late 1833, he set forth once again with his retinue of horses and instruments and surveyors. The area between Sironj and Delhi proved to be difficult terrain, with villages that lay in sight lines and rivers that made setting up towers impossible.
Complicated maneuvers were carried out with almost military precision. Ultimately, it was in 1837, after a lot of trouble en route, sometimes with nature and sometimes with local populations hostile to the frequent intrusions and arrogant attitudes the survey teams brought with them, that the triangulation was completed between Dehradun and Siron. However, to Everest's horror, the Sironj baseline was off by almost three feet. This was unacceptable. Because the error was caused by the earlier Ramsden's chain, Everest redid the entire route back to Hyderabad to rectify any errors that may have been caused by the chain. This kind of meticulous concern with detail was so typical of Everest and Lambton. We are now flying over the Doon Valley, which was the destination of the Ark. Everest completed this in 1843, before retiring from the Survey of India and returning to England. In a space of more than 40 years, Everest and Lambton had covered a distance of 1,600 miles in the most inhospitable conditions imaginable. In doing so, they created a base on which the tree of Indian cartography could grow. They also provided valuable information about the shape of the earth through the length of India. This they substantiated with a crisscross of triangles across the width of the country. And this laid the foundation for a comprehensive mapping of India. The international scientific community ultimately did recognize the achievements of both Lambton and Everest no scientific man ever had a greater monument to his memory than the great meridional arc of India. It is one of the most stupendous achievements in the whole history of science. Yet this work was overshadowed by the many other great scientific enterprises of the 19th century. Lambton was soon forgotten. And if Everest is remembered, it is only because the world's highest peak is named after him.